The brain runs on glucose. So, I mean, duh, you should be eating Sour Patch Kids and Pixie Sticks. I mean, it's what all the scholars are doing. Yeah, it's true. The brain runs on glucose. But even when we are deprived of glucose, the body finds other ways to get just enough glucose, not too much. You see, what sugar and glucose in excess amounts do to the brain is quite clear based upon a lot of this research. Now, you might be thinking, okay, I'm cramming for a exam or I'm just trying to just get through the, my TPS reports or something, right? But the reality is having a bunch of sugar is probably going to do the opposite effect. It might give you a serotonin boost and a dopamine hit that kind of gives you the illusion of your brain operating better, but when it actually comes down to brain energetics, it's sabotaging you. Okay, there's two main reasons here. We have to remember that the brain can become insulin resistant just like other cells in our body. Okay, we think about insulin resistance in the way of, oh, well, if I have too many carbs, I'm gonna make myself diabetic. Or, well, that affects the brain too. And you don't have to be diabetic to have that effect. A lot of it comes down to something called network stability, which I've probably beaten into the ground quite a bit, but I'll just you know, repave it real quick. The National Academy of Sciences had published a study not that long ago that demonstrated that when subjects had 75 grams of glucose, it dramatically changed their network stability. And what that means is the ability for different regions of the brain to communicate with one another. We have cool advances in technology now where we can look at a brain under CT scan or fMRI real time, like with like while things are being consumed and also over the longer term. So we can see, okay, yeah, a significant bolus of glucose, too much, and it's absolutely going to overwhelm the brain. The brain regions communicate with one another in a very unique way. Okay, now I've explained this in another video, but I want you to imagine brain regions whispering to one another. Okay, so like the limbic system that regulates emotions will whisper to the prefrontal cortex. It has to be a very quiet and clean and not inflamed environment for that whisper to naturally be heard. Okay. Well, this particular study was looking at ketones in that case, and it found that when ketones were present, it was a quieter environment, so the communication was better. Network stability was better, which is a hallmark of aging, right? Better network stability is better brain health, better brain aging. Now, when you look at how this looks under glucose, it's loud. Lots of glucose equals lots of loud noise and the whisper doesn't get heard, so the signals aren't being basically submitted to different regions of the brain properly. So that's a big issue because that's kind of our fluidity, our ability to kind of like connect with our emotions and therefore articulate in a specific way based upon our verbal memory, our spatial memory, everything like that. But the other piece of the equation has to do with how like even refined carbohydrates have an effect within our brain, right? So there's a study that's published in the journal Alzheimer's and it was really intriguing because it took a look at people that were older, like 79 and a half was the average age and they monitored them for four years, okay? And what they found is that 900, over 900 participants, 200 of them developed cognitive impairment or Alzheimer's. Well, what they were able to do is they kind of reverse engineered and they said, okay, well, those that consumed the highest amount of carbohydrates had almost twice the risk of developing cognitive impairment, a 1.89 hazard ratio. Clear as day, and that's a big analysis, right? Okay, well then when you look at the lowest quartiles of cognitive dysfunction, like who had the best cognitive function after the four years, higher protein and higher fat intake. Not necessarily keto, but definitely not having copious amounts of carbohydrates coming in at one sitting. So how it affects our brain is not just a short-term thing, but it's also a long-term thing. And I'll talk about sort of the brain foggy kind of feeling you might get when you have certain things here in just a second. One of the ways that you can, despite whether you're doing low carb or not, improve what are called brain energetics is by adding MCT oil to your diet. I would recommend having MCT oil surrounding or not surrounding carbohydrate consumption. So like in its own. So that study that I mentioned, the network stability study that was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences for the USA, that was interesting because the researchers actually concluded or speculated within that study that MCT oil, since it was used in the study to stimulate more ketone production, they found even people that weren't in ketosis, MCTs seemed to change brain energetics. And I've talked about that in other videos before, meaning it actually in encouraged better brain energy. So is it better to lean into MCTs than it is into sugar if you're cramming for an exam, you're studying or anything like that? 
I'm going to go out on a limb and say it seems like it, but I also can't make a promise. Um, if you're wondering, the MCT oil that I recommend, I use Perfect Keto's MCT oil. So it's down below. You can get it in a powder form or in their C8 oil form. I just think it's the best C8 that's out there. I don't know. I just really like it, and it's really, really cost-effective compared to a lot of the other ones. So I put a link down below so you can save a couple of bucks. But another thing that you could try, they have a collagen. And a collagen is already good for the brain, good for the connective tissue, but it has MCT in it. So it might be a nice one-two punch to get the collagen and the MCT. So they're a big sponsor in this channel. So I'm not trying to, you know, like lie or do anything there. Like, yes, they support this channel, but it's as a result of me reaching out to them because I love their brand. So there's a link down below. That way you can save a couple percent, save a few bucks and get your hands on some collagen and MCT oil combination in a powder form. So that link is down below in the description after this video. So when you look at brain energetics as well, you see when there are copious amounts of higher glycemic carbohydrates, like say, I'm gonna have a bagel or something. You'll see that the brain energetics are very erratic, which coincides with some of the studies that have looked at like children and how they respond to high glycemic carbohydrates. Their energy is much more nervous and erratic, just like the brain seems to respond when you look at network stability under fMRI. Very intriguing stuff, but we also have to factor in another piece here. Okay, gluten. Now, gluten is interesting because we know of celiac. We understand that celiac is like a very strong intolerance to gluten, but there's also just general intolerances to gluten that about 10% of the population have, meaning they trigger an inflammatory response in those people, or gluten triggers an inflammatory response. Now, up to that 10%, which is considered a clinical intolerance, there is a continuous scale. So someone could have no intolerance whatsoever, or someone could have a ton of intolerance right up to the brink of being considered clinical. You don't really know. So even a small intolerance over time can lead to a larger intolerance as your body builds up antibodies. Okay, now that's a separate discussion talking about the immunological response, but when you consume gluten and you have an intolerance, which you may or may not know you have, it's going to trigger the activation of a protein called zonulin, and that zonulin lives in the gut barrier. And when that protein is activated, it decreases or increases the permeability, I should say, so things can soak into your bloodstream, triggering an inflammatory reaction. That's not the important part. I mean, that's important, but what's more important is that the Biophysical Research Communications Journal published that zonulin isn't just in our gut barrier, it's in our blood-brain barrier too, which explains why if that protein gets activated, we see an increase in inflammatory response within the brain. The microglia, which is the immune system within our brain, the hermetically sealed environment by the blood-brain barrier that activates only when we have brain inflammation or brain issues, triggering brain inflammation, well, that can elevate as a result of gluten getting that zonulin activated, which therefore increases the permeability and allows things to come in to the brain. So thereby, that whole grain brain thing, there was a book a while back about grain brain, which I think speculated a lot, but when you look at the clear science, it makes sense. Like, why do you feel cruddy when you have a high glycemic carb when the brain is supposed to run on glucose? Remember that even if you're doing keto, the brain actually regulates how much glucose it should use perfectly when you're in absence of dietary glucose. Like if you're not bringing carbohydrates into the diet, then you have a perfect example of exactly what your brain would demand because that is a very specific process and a very regulated environment with how much glucose the brain needs. When the brain starts to be able to also run on ketones, then that's perfect. You have a great environment that's very sealed and very quiet as far as network stability goes but the brain will always be able to determine how much glucose it needs. We shouldn't be the deciding factor of adding more glucose in because we subjectively feel like we need more brain energy. We need to fuel our body sufficiently and our brain will take what it needs, whether it's from the diet or through other energy substrates via gluconeogenesis. The bottom line is if you're cramming, if you're trying to get more brain boost, sugar is not the route to go. It doesn't make sense. It makes sense to give your brain what it needs to improve its own glucose metabolism and network stability. As always, I'll see you tomorrow.